Hello and welcome to the show. Now we're back on BeamNG Drive today, continuing the great automation autocross challenge. Our first contender comes from Lonely Wolfin. Uh, this is the Shinny Super RS, powered by a naturally aspirated V8. We're talking 300 horsepower, just a smidge under the 300 horsepower mark. Also under a thousand kilos at 971, all-wheel drive. This is the sort of car that it well, actually is very similar along very similar lines to my to my Kestrel, uh, even the same colour and everything. Oh, okay, pretty good acceleration. I might have overshot the brakes ever so slightly uh, down there. We have got ABS on this one. The of course the ESC has been turned off as it will be on everything. Uh, the ABS will help with the locking up, but perhaps ultimately you might lose you might lose a slight bit of peak brake performance however we have seen cars uh, in the last episode that had issues with you know tiny tiny amounts of brake pressure cause them to lock up so this ABS is ultimately safer uh, however maybe there is ways of getting the car faster if you get your brakes set up absolutely perfectly now this is working pretty much I mean it is very very similar in, in many ways to the Kestrel, similar sort of, it's got good throttle response. It does change direction pretty well. There's still that little bit of all-wheel drive understeer. We're probably going to see that from a fair few cars. Now, what are we going to see top-end-wise? Now, we've seen cars up towards the 88, 89 mile an hour mark. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. It's not quite as fast as the downforce mill. It doesn't have the power. But what it does have is much more, I feel at least, accessible power, especially for a little autocross course. That was a little bit of a wiggle from the back of the car as we weave it through the final gates. It is across the nine, a 122.9 for an opening opening run. Not a bad run. You know, not, not a bad run at all. Uh, we're a couple of seconds off the time set by the Kestrel and the Downforce Mobile. Now there is probably some time. If got, I have been doing really well at going fast on my opening run and then <laughs> struggling to uh, get near that on subsequent runs. Of course, I get three goes with the car. We were very wide into turn one on that first go. Neat and tidy is probably going to be the way to, to go here. But uh, yeah, I get three runs with each of the cars, which means well, mistakes are costly. If a vehicle is very difficult to drive, it's going to be more difficult to extract a uh, fast time out of the car. We're probably going to want to be... Uh, same thing be this car does seem to get away a little bit more with being chucked around. There is still that big oversteer wiggle. However, it's not, uh, not too uncontrollable, which is nice. Oh, I may have left it in third. Okay, it's really nice having an engine that uh, the gears, I mean of course it's important to be in the right gear at the right time, however this still has some go. If it's just, if you're sat in an awkward place in between gear ratios, this engine's absolutely fine. Unlike we saw from some cars, and I'm sure we will see from some other cars, if you're going to be getting the six, 700 horsepower out of these 2 liter engines, which is possible, you do so with the laggiest turbos, potentially. Uh, we're up to, again, 82 miles an hour from the car. So, I mean, speed is speed is pretty good. It's another one that feels pretty fast around here. Feels pretty quick. Maybe it's just not quite as fast accelerating as some. It's certainly not quite as agile as the Secura, but it's twice the weight. Not many things will be for a little while, at least. That is a very, very similar time. I don't even know if that's not identical. Uh, what was... Uh, I mean, <laughs> I think that was it the last time. Jeez. That is a very, very similar time for two runs. That is some consistency right there. I don't know whether it's good driving. I mean, it's, it's not bad driving, but that is some consistency. I'm not sure we're going to be able to find a couple of seconds to put it up with the... Put it up with the Kestrel, up with the Downforce Mobile. I will, again, give it as good of a shot as I can. Now, chucking the car sideways around here is not really going to uh, help matters, in all honesty. Uh, you're just going to end up wasting a lot of time. And you ultimately run the risk of having a big crash. Not knowing what quite how the cars are going to react around here, it is probably better off to play things nice and safe. Uh, but again, when you've only got three runs, nice and safe is kind of what you want in in many ways. It's an interesting additional concern, shall we say, when it comes to building a car. But this is a this is a nice vehicle. You know, this is a real solid 
uh, solid vehicle, solid sports car, if you like. Lovely, lovely throttle response, nice and easy to drive. The brakes are pretty good. It accelerates nice and fast. Sounds great. Uh, <laughs> looks looks good as well. It's got what you want from a uh, from a sports car. Now, let's try and take a better line through there. We're a little bit wider on the exit. Still got a little bit of wheel speed, a little kick of a oversteer. I'm kind of surprised. I, I did jump on the throttle very early, but a 300 horsepower all-wheel drive, I was perhaps hoping for a little bit more in the way of traction from the car down towards the hairpin we go for the final time as we weave our way between the concrete up towards the line. It's a better run. We found about a second there. We got down to a 22. 22-1 22 from the Super RS. It's not a bad time at all. Not a bad time at all. Around here, yeah, down to about a second and a half uh, off the likes of the Kestrel and <laughs> the, the huge power of the downforce mobile a very fun car to drive and i like i like that throttle response that's very very nice our second vehicle today this comes from berner hines it is the leiden vampire r4 an interesting prospect this one 341 horsepower from a turbo i4 which is you know fairly average powers however it is rather heavy at 1700 kilos it's also rear wheel drive this not built from ultra lightweight materials like carbon fiber and fiberglass it is actually made mostly of steel or probably some lead or some concrete maybe it's quite heavy it's quite big uh, <laughs> it is yeah rear wheel drive not the ideal drive line around here but i'll be interested to see how it's going to manage all of this you never know you, you never no, it might just it might just surprise, shall we say? There's going to probably be a lot of wheel spin. Uh, now, oh, okay. The front. The, I'm not sure the front end is is, but the front end doesn't really turn into these. We're going to have to be very early on the brakes here. Christ, you could feel that this car is about twice the weight of uh, <laughs> a lot of the vehicles that have gone. It, it's. I mean. In fact, this is heavier than my than my legnum. Uh, <laughs> my biggest leg. Oh, I've got to change it out to first. We're going to definitely need first gear out of these corners. In the back. Come on, turn around the corner. Uh, first is going to. Oh, it's going to be at that really awkward. Oh, it's going to be. That's not going to be a fun sort of gear ratios to have, is it? Because first is going to be way too short, and then you're going to need to be in second, and then you'll be out of the power band for a lot of it. I mean, it, it looks cool and everything. This is far too heavy for an autocross course. It is. It is far too heavy. We're gonna have. We almost had some tail out. Some tail out action. Or I say far too heavy. Like it's, it's not actually a terribly, terribly bad driving car. But when you're going up against, well, some of the things that we have seen here, it's gonna give it grief. Oh, we definitely got to be first here. Now, what can it do when it's given an opportunity to open up the tabs? What sort of speed are we gonna see out of the car? It's 60 miles an hour. That uh, unfortunately is beaten, well, by everything at the moment. I, I, again, I hate to be mean, but uh, <laughs> it's literally everything has gone faster than it down the straight, even the 660cc car. And panic and grab the brakes. Oh, there's even going to need to be a little bit of handbrake maybe through there. Uh, oh, the, the time is just not looking good for the vampire. The, the gearbox does not does not help matters in this either. It is across the line. It's a 148 <laughs> impaled impaled on the crash barrier. Right. We go again. I mean, what's the trick going to be with this one? Neat and tidy is, of course, going to be important here. I fear, though, we're just going to constantly end up at a wonky place in the old in the old power band because we're constantly going to be wanting to be in first, maybe second, and then first again. And around, around, around we go. Get on that power. We don't have big oversteer issues, which is always nice. Sometimes, you know, the, the slightly heavier cars, we've seen it in build series. Admittedly, I'm talking build series on Forza, but the various things I've built cars for and so on in there, sometimes that little bit heavier vehicle, the added stability can be quite, uh, quite helpful. Uh, yeah, I mean, the back end will slide in this, but it's not sort of uncontrollable, uncontrollable sliding. Problem is, is I swear some of these times I'm pressing downshift. I maybe I'm at a slightly. Maybe the game's not wanting me to downshift because I'm at too high a speed or something. I don't know. I swear I press downshift sometimes and it doesn't doesn't go. Regardless, uh, gearbox yeah definitely doesn't make life easy for this. 
Are we going to get through these next corners? We're going to have to go for first again. I mean, we don't really want to encourage any wheel spin from the car if we can help it, because that's just going to waste more time. Come on, go, 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 vampire, go. Uh, you're 61 miles an hour, and then I've got to panic and grab the brakes. Really panic and grab the brakes. I mean, this is probably the strongest car we've seen so far. You know, let's, let's, let's look for some positives here. It is probably the strongest car. You know, if it had a fight with the little aluminium carbon fiber well, I mean carbon fiber is, is pretty damn tough but the fiberglass cars they, they, they probably wouldn't stand too much of a chance against this it's a 44 it's better we've got it down to a 44.6 uh, <laughs> with some careful precision driving by me uh, <laughs> can we go any faster that is that is the only border question and I do like the look I like the vampire I like the vampire look at the front for a little bit of fun. There's also no mighty wings. There's no there's no mighty wings. There's no crazy amount of downforce uh, on on the vehicle. Oh, come on. Around we go. Oh, we get oh, we might get might have excited it a little bit. There was some excitement there from the rear end. It slid briefly. Don't know what diff. I didn't actually pay attention to what diff is in the car. It's it's not got a one tire. Like I'm sure there are going to be some uh, weird and wonderfully built cars that are going to uh, end up in here. Open diffs. Open diffs would not fare very well. I'm just I'm going to say <laughs> open diffs on wobbly cars. Thankfully, I, I can say these things. Entries are now closed for this uh, for this competition. Uh, so yeah, I, I can't give people any more bad ideas in terms of uh, in terms of how to build cars. Because yeah, open diffs and wobbly suspension would very much end in a nigh on undrivable car because it would just sit and spin a wheel around in the air. Uh, I'm taking all sorts of lines with this car. Just it's it's a case of can I keep up momentum? Can I run a little bit wider? Because we're not going so horrendously fast. We're not a big twitchy vehicle. We can kind of get away with some different era lines, but I mean the downside is we're doing that because we aren't horrendously fast. We're not getting in and out of the corners in the uh, in the same manner. I'm playing it. I was kind of surprised I haven't pinged this off a barrier somewhere and rolled it because I am pushing it very very close to the to the barrier. Oh, we've gone very deep under brakes there. It's trying to get the most out of the <laughs> out of the car. I'm sorry, vampire. I was giving it everything. We were late on the brakes. Now we've got a bit of wheel spin from the car. Oh, I might. God, I think I've I think I've blown this run in the final sector. Just, try, just trying to push the car. It was with all the braking that uh, it got the better of us. Around the final corner we go. It's not going to be better. A 44 will be the vampire's time. I mean, as a more luxurious sports car, I could see it being a fun vehicle for running around an autocross. Yeah, notice the weight. The gears don't help. The turbo lag doesn't help. But couple that with what is a good 700 kilos heavier than a lot of cars with, you know, not much more power. It is, uh, <laughs> yeah, struggles a bit. The third vehicle to run today, this comes from Random41. It is the Imp Cars Super Sport. It is the most powerful vehicle of the day, 415.9 horsepower. I will call it 416. Comes with a turbocharged flat six. It's the second biggest engine uh, that we have had today. It is also the second heaviest car that we're going to have. 1,145 kilos, considerably lighter than the Vampire. It is, although also all wheel drive. It looks the business. It does look, I mean, from the front, it looks it looks mean. I like it. <laughs> I really like it. I think it's a great looking car. Uh, let's, I mean, this is the sort of, looking at power wise, it's maybe a little heavier than some cars, but it's got a decent amount of power. If we've got the right sort of gears going on in this, what's the right sort of gear ratios and the turbos aren't too bad, we might be, we might be okay. Uh, the gearbox did not want to go into manual mode through all of that. So the gears are super short. Cry the bra <laughs> I've, got, I've got to adjust now suddenly to a very different vehicle. It's kind of strange. It's, it's easier adjusting to the big boats in some ways. Go from, like, you know, quick car to big boats. Going from big boats to quick car again. We've got to, I've got to completely... Re this is going to be a little bit of a uh, learning. Remember what the hell happens when you actually have a sports car again. Oh, that was a little bit close. Christ, the brakes on this thing are phenomenal. That is getting stopped very, very well. That is getting stopped incredibly well. I'm pretty sure this one is a full push rod suspension all around. It's got some serious handling about it. Yeah, 
those those brakes might be what do it for this car. The turning is brilliant as well. That is really changing. There is no real understeer coming from this car. The engine's lovely and responsive. What are we going to see from it in terms of straight line speed? Will the extra bit of weight slow it down slightly? It's, yeah, not the quickest down the straight. Not, oh. Okay, might have done something a little bit weird there. It isn't the quickest down the straight, um, which... I might have expected a little bit faster, but that's not, of course, it's not really going to matter in the grand scheme of things. When it is stopping as well as it is, and turning as well as it is, that straight line speed is, uh, yeah, not so important. Okay, it was, I will be perfectly honest, badly, badly driven by me. Uh, <laughs> that was, I've got to really wrap my head around going from the vampire to that thing, because that it, it changes direction. There's a lot more speed in that. Although I was expecting that to perhaps be a little bit closer. I was expecting that to perhaps be a little bit closer. And there was a couple of uh, strange sort of gearbox moments from the car. Uh, it's crazy. That, that, the brakes are unbelievable. I thought the brakes on my Kestrel were good. I really did think the brakes on my Kestrel were... I mean, they, they were good. They were big vented ceramic discs or whatever I had on that one. Actually, now I can't remember. But it's, you know, that had as big of a brakes as I could put on it. But this thing stops incredibly well. Now, can we... Oh, don't get too close, though, to the inside. I'm also liking the turbos are not really giving us any grief whatsoever. I'm running out of third gear out of these corners. The car's absolutely fine with it. Uh, even if I'm, you know, slightly out of position with the gearing, it is all right. You know, the car is okay with with whatever I'm doing to it. Oh, that's a there's a little bit of understeer coming from the car as we head in towards this nasty wiggly section. Easy to get things wrong through here. Easy to clip a wall or something silly. Right, what have we got? Maybe a better run down this back straight as we go out towards... Yeah, that was a better run. 79 miles an hour. Uh, again, it's when it's come to a complete halt there, it's on something slightly peculiar. I am not 100% sure what's going on with that. If I... Like the, if we do lock it up, let's say we lock it up, it has got ABS. If we do do something a little bit strange, though, it, it's... Okay, we have to be a tad careful down there. It's a better time, a 24-7. I definitely think there's a little bit more speed in there as well to come out of the car. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely losing a bit. I don't know whether it's a second or so, perhaps, from it being a bit funky under braking. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I'm, as a car to drive, this is excellent. This is exactly what you want. Not 100% sure where the speed might be in the uh, in the car. Where we're going to find the four or so seconds that is that is needed out of this vehicle. I will do my best though to try and find it, and I'll do my best, of course, to try and find it without clonking a wall. That is the important thing. I mean, I've, I've pretty much got rid of the uh, memory of the vampire now. <laughs> pretty much got my uh, my driving, my braking points and whatnot uh, sorted out. Although my turning points maybe not quite perfect through there. Okay, run up through these next corners. I might be a little. I might be a little bit early on the brakes there, but then you kind of don't wander as far as to fight the car, getting it back across. Uh, it's there, perhaps where we struggle a little bit more, just with that initial, that initial get-go, and it's that uh, initial, ooh, it does not like second gear. Or it doesn't feel like it likes second gear. Maybe that's the problem I'm having further down the course? I'm not actually sure. Uh, we've got to go, definitely got to go second out of here. Uh, there we go. Right, now let's try and not have weird braking moments down here. Uh, we're going to chuck it in, and yeah, maybe I was going down to second and it was spinning the back of the car or just yeah <laughs> we're going to keep with third through all of that maybe only go down to second when we really get down to these very very tight corners it feels like a better run oh it's a little wide little wide through there we can bring it back run towards the line now not, i thought that was going quicker than that i thought that was going quicker I mean, it feels great to drive. It, it does feel great to drive. There is something that occasionally goes a little bit odd with the braking power delivery at some point. I must just be in a slight, either something in slight gears or slight rev range thing. It does a little bit strange. It is a yeah, lovely, lovely car to drive. Surprised by the time. I genuinely thought that that was going to be a bit faster than that. But... Yeah, I mean, the second and third run's fairly consistent in terms in terms of time. I think there was perhaps a little bit more in it, although there was also a bit more in, in the Kestrels rather than some of the other cars. It's the, the nature of this sort of challenge. 
And the final car to run today. This comes from Brian3898. It is the Visa Super Performante. It is the lightest car of the day. Amazingly, despite it looking like the largest, it probably is the largest car here. Uh, it looks bulky, but it is the lightest car of the day here. 869 kilos, powered by a 302 horsepower naturally aspirated i4. It is also all-wheel drive so we should have the traction we should have a uh, nice power band oh we should not be too bad through these corners although i have a little bit overshot that, <laughs> that first one braking performance perhaps does not quite feel as as sharp as that uh, imp cars vehicle however uh, it's Certainly not too bad. Again, it doesn't feel too bad around these around these corners. Are we going to? I mean, I guess we will have a check and the, the, kind of the, the main check in terms of acceleration performance is down that back track. It's far too difficult to really track anything through here. You're basically constantly cornering, braking, cornering, braking. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> the only chance you really get to check. Oh, I'm a little little bit understeering out there is when we get to the back straights. Now let's be. Let's be neat and tidy through here and then find out how quick are you going to go. Like throttle response, power delivery seems pretty solid in this. What are we looking at in terms of speed? 80 miles an hour. It's a good sort of speed. It's a good sort of speed. As I said, not going to be amongst the quickest cars, but straight line speed is not everything. As we head up towards the final of the sharp hairpins, we're a little bit late on the brakes again. We can, we can learn from from that for future runs. It is across the line, 24-3 for a first go in the Super Performante. Uh, <laughs> like the car, like the looks of the car, perhaps don't quite suit the name. However, kind of, it looks like a big sort of bruiser of a coupe. But either way, it seems pretty pretty rapid in terms of its uh, in terms of its pace here so let's get the braking points a little bit better it's, it's okay if you run a smidge wide you can kind of bring it back with a uh, nice late apex and that might help fire the car out down towards the uh, next corner come on turn 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 while weight wise it is fairly fairly light all things considered longer wheelbase may not help too much i mean the tiny little little k cars you know, that that small wheelbase oh that's too fast there i think that's okay i might bugger that one there i'm trying to be a bit too brave we, we can we, we, we can recover to at least continue the run but that's very wide through that corner yeah but the long wheelbase just won't help with turning circle and so on won't help with agility no matter how like the car is so that's something i say it's working against it only slightly compared to some of the sports cars it's not a giant estate car and it doesn't it doesn't feel too big or too heavy it does feel slightly less agile than the imp cars one that uh, that ran but still pretty pretty solid and it has got plenty of acceleration to to go with it are we going to get some sliding it's there's a little bit more tail happy than we have seen although from again yeah, we talk about all-wheel drive cars here this one is happy to to go a little bit sideways although that's not necessarily a bad thing in some instances can be in others oh we're gonna clonk the wall on the way through it's actually gone faster despite me having a big off and clonking the concrete on the way through there's a little bit of time there is a little bit of time to be found in this car got to be a touch mindful of the brakes Got to be a touch mindful of the brakes. We can't quite be as aggressive with it as with uh, some vehicles, but we can. You know, it's still a half decent level of performance in this. It's really nice having a car that's that's got power to, to go in in second gear. It's gonna be the first one to bloody run wide through there either, as you're trying to find that uh, that all important time. Now we can probably still we can still we can still work with this. We can bring it back. Let's just focus on these next long turns. I'm going for that late apex again. Don't clock don't clip the concrete. We haven't had a roll out of any of these cars. Let's not tempt fate, though. <laughs> it's always, in, in some ways, this kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, remote control car racing. Uh, you know, where where I race anyway, you, you, we run between these pipes, and the closer you get to the pipes, the faster you're going to get lap times, or the quicker lap times you can get. And that's how I like to drive my car. It's how I like my car set up, and so on. I I do tend to almost skim along the pipes, but of course closer you get to them you get a tiny bit wrong and that's it it's game over you'll ping off of them spin maybe roll i have rolled a few 
uh, remote control cars in my time. Uh, so, yeah, like this this sort of concrete barrier gives us a very very similar sort of feeling as we head up towards. Now, let's get the braking better down here. It's still a smidge wide. I think I'd rather be a smidge wide though than a smidge early. Straighten it up for the run to the finish line. That's a good time. Down to another 21. It's another 21. A 121.6. It is just under a second down on the Downforce Mobile, just over a second down on the Kestrel, but that is not a bad time at all from the vehicle. Yeah, that's good fun. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good fun car to, to drive around here. It does pretty much exactly what you, what you want it to be doing. Perhaps the slightly longer wheelbase might work against it in a little bit of the uh, fiddlier sections around here, but on the whole... Yeah, damn nice car. On to our leaderboard. And while it is no change for the top two, the Super Performante will go in to third place. That one at 21.6. It narrowly beats the uh, the Shinny Super RS. That was a 22.1. They were quite similar cars in terms of statistics. We very, very different looking cars. <laughs> different looking cars indeed. But yeah, sort of stats-wise... Kind of similar powers, vaguely similar weight. Uh, both pretty good cars to drive when it came to this course. Yeah, not quite as fast as the Kestrel or the Downforce Mobile, but they are right up towards the top of the table. Uh, sixth place, we have the Imp Cars at Super Sport. A little bit of a funny one. that It feels very nice to drive, and when driving it, yeah, it feels a very, very quick car. And as looking back over the footage when I was editing this together, uh, I think perhaps what's what caused that car some issues is it actually wasn't accelerating that fast. It wasn't going that fast in any of the braking zones, certainly compared to the likes of the Shilly or the, the Super Formante. It was doing about 10 miles an hour slower in some of the braking zones even. So, yeah, a li little bit uh, bemused, a little bit puzzled as to where that was lacking in the acceleration department. It was a tad heavier, but decent power, like decent power to weight ratio for what we've seen so far. I'm not sure. Not sure on that one. And the Vampire, well, that is... That is down the bottom of 44.6. Uh, it's a boat. <laughs> it's a big boat, essentially. And around an autocross course, a big boat does does struggle a tad bit. That, though, is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, a goodbye.